You know, I really do love Pike's Peak, and I feel that the last time that I left Pike's Peak, it was just uh, way too negative. I love Pike's Peak. I really want to go there in real life and take my chances of actually trying to drive up there. But the one thing that I think that I really missed out on the last episode of Pike's Peak is the fact that a lot of games, especially something like Pike's Peak, is much better done with friends and tricking said friends. So yesterday I told my viewers in about 24 hours, just bring a time attack vehicle. The last time I did time attack though, mm, th that was around Brands Hatch, a particularly eh, medium sort of size track, not too hard, but getting them to go on Pike's Peak. So it's gonna be quite difficult. And to ramp up this difficulty, what I plan to do is make it whoever crosses the line first, then after that there's only five minutes to finish off your lap, so if they have really fast cars, they're going to want to take it quite easy, but not too easy that somebody might be able to go faster than them. And that brings me to my ultimate point is, if you bring a sensible car to Pike's Peak, you can actually be really enjoyable. Just a regular normal car, got some aluminium, made of just some normal steel, normal suspension, a normal type of V8. That sounds like dreams. Mmm, yeah. With a normal manual gearbox for that gloriousness and all-wheel drive for that controllability. I mean, I'm not even going to go semi-slicks, I'm just gonna go with a sports compound. In fact, taking this thing around the automation test track, it's not even going to be particularly fast. Only doing a 214, which is sports car territory. And I hope everyone's bought incredibly fast cars, so I get to make it to the finish first. All right, I have my viewers, I have my tongue in cheek, they know the rules. One of them has brought a particularly nasty car to handle, hopefully. Let's see how this goes. Uh oh, that countdown app is tricky to keep in mind. But we're having fun so far. Oh, that thing sounds like a chainsaw. And it looks like they are going to have a bit of trouble handling it. Oh, oh, Team Orange way off already. Oh, and they've spun too. Oh, this is glorious. This is exactly what I was hoping for. You know, me in the lead. Now, I am not believing that they won't catch on me really quickly because I am driving a relatively slow car and this one is like right on my tail after spinning earlier. I think they're taking it a little bit easy. They look a little bit wayward. I'm keeping it fairly straight and narrow. I don't know why they're sticking to my back end like that. I'm pretty sure they're a lot faster than me. What I want is for them to crash more. Oh, their vehicle does not look in a good way. That is a tricky corner, but I was able to get it down right. Late Apex here. Look at them go! I'm actually surprised that they're able to drive that car so hard with so much damage. And they are pulling away. Oh, no, there he goes. That's. That was against the rules. I saw what he did there. <laughs> what a cheeky little bugger. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about this car. I did a little bit of testing earlier whilst I was waiting for them. And with a controller, this thing is god awful with its oversteer. But at least if it starts to, because like it does lift off oversteer chronically. Once it starts to do that, all you have to do is, once it's pointing the right way, just power down and the thing will pull itself straight with its all-wheel drive system. It's interesting to drive very fun not very safe where is this on the other hand oh no did he have to restart the game i didn't realize that mr cheese had to leave and rejoin uh but in a cockpit like this oh my god this thing is buttery smooth 
No lift off oversteer at all. It's glorious. Oh, they're actually getting... Oh, no, they're nowhere near close. Oh! I was too busy looking at their names. I didn't notice the rocks. They were right in front of me. Oh, they are really, really far back there. They haven't even made it that far at all. They've really got to be careful because I'm beyond halfway now and it looks like those guys are right down at the beginning. Oh dear. They may not even finish, but they do have five minutes after I finish to uh, make it to the top. All right, we're in the devil's playground now. We've got to be careful because this is consecutive hairpins. Really, really tricky part of the track. And you can get caught out super easy if you're doing anything silly like trying to talk at the same time going up here. But, oh my god. Compared to the last time I was here, this is actually so much more fun. And this car is just so buttery smooth. Now the idea behind this is it was kind of like a an amalgamation between German engineering, so like a Audi V8 all-wheel drive cross with like a muscle car sort of body with a little tinge of uh, Japanese wild design. I cannot see the left hairpin from here. Are you, ooh, I would love this thing, this game in VR sometimes, and then other times I would be like, you know what? The bad performance of this game, it'd probably be a total vomfest. Wait, even Echo Min? Had to rejoin the server? What happened to them? Strange. Alright. Oh, get turned a little bit. Now we're heading into the area of the map in which I don't know very well at all. So we're just gonna take it nice and smooth. Coming around here. Just shift down a gear, turn in. Oh! Oh, oh wait, no, Echo Min wasn't even in the server. What am I me what am I talking about? Echo Min was uh, one of the other viewers that didn't make it in time to this event. So maybe they're just joining late. That's a choice. Compared to the other ones, he may actually make it, but I mean I uh, There's about a minute until I reach the top, so this is not gonna be a sub 10 minute car. Actually now that I see the actual peak of Pike's Peak. Oh, oh Pucker moment. Almost went off one of the many cliffs on this track. But this vehicle is able to rein it in, thank god. And this thing really does not need to go into first gear. That first gear is really just a pulling gear. And the rest of it, this thing just loves second and third around here. So much fun to be had. I, I am going to be uploading this vehicle to the repository, and I suggest giving it a try. You know, just having a little bit of fun. It is really good in a cockpit for just being a smooth vehicle. If you want balls to the wall sort of stuff, you, you're not going to find that here. But like muscle, uh, I think uh, I did end up tweaking the engine a little bit. We got a five and a half liter V8 creating... Oh, the engine is already suffering for power. Now, BeamNG apparently does, in fact, have the ability to have engines lose power as altitude goes up. And this thing is suffering right now. No turbos on this. It is so much slower right now. I think we're also kind of like uh, reaching some steeper bits of road, so that might be causing a bit of the issue. But this thing is feeling really breathless right now. And we're coming up, we got two big bends and one hairpin, so we're going to be careful around here. They are three to nine kilometers away. I don't like their chances. And now coming around to the final corner. I can't believe how easy this car was to drive up here. It's so good. And across the line. All right, let's start my timer now for five minutes and tell everyone the good news. Hey guys, how's it going? And have you just finished? <laughs> yes, I did. Of course you have. Good luck. 
Uh, I'm, I'm only at up. the start. Yeah, I'm only six minutes up, so... <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm noticing you guys are struggling a bit. So the closest one is Dormant, heading up with the oh, Corvette-like vi- Oh no, no, this is the Aston Martin one. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. If you make it in time, you will be able to beat my time. And I actually have a pretty good time, so you'd better push. Push really hard. I don't Put remember this section. Did my- I think my vehicle just started rolling away. Yep, my vehicle started rolling away. <laughs> uh, probably should have left the handbrake on. Then there's Ekai Min, the late joiner, with an absolutely ridiculous looking time attacker. And you can just see by how much this vehicle is pushing down that it has just huge amounts of downforce. Though it is right slow right now. And it is still squatting quite a bit. So maybe the thing is just really super low. Mr. Cheese looks like they have... Oh, you know what? Mr. Cheese has connection issues, so I, I can't tell what they're up to. What if I just refresh their car? Nothing? Okay, great. Chromatic, on the other hand, I don't like their chances, but seemingly they're doing okay. It's a little bit wayward heading up here and coming into a tight hairpin. Oh, this thing must have a monstrous amount of down... Oh, Downforce. Maybe they need more toe in on the rear to help them get out of corners because that seems to be a big issue for them. They're pushing super, super hard. They should probably be playing a little bit more safe. I can't tell. The lag is so bad that uh, this vehicle being so fast is causing it to act all kinds of weird. Now, this is a corner that usually catches me up. Oh no, he's binned it. Is he gonna. He's still pushing it? Oh my. Oh no, he's gone. This car looks really hard to drive. Hopefully they learn how to drive it before it comes around to uh, the actual Le Mans event or the uh, 24 hours of beam event. We got Dorman now. Looks like they have been completely in the wars. I don't know what's happening, but they've crossed the line. Well, hey Dorman, what time did you get? 943.24. Damn it, I'm in second. All right, well, the next in line is Ekai, who is way ahead of Chromatic Schnitzel. So Ekai is normally a really, really fast racer, and it doesn't look like I've had much issues getting up here. They may actually beat me, and by how fast this vehicle looks, they may even be dormant, really. God, they are pushing so hard right now. I think my plan has failed. How much time do they have to finish? Five. Four, three, two, one, zero. Time's up, guys. Oh, what a pity. Looks like I get second place. Silver medal. I'm happy with silver, pl uh, silver medal. Chromatic, your car is looking worse for wear. Yeah, I've taken two hits. Yeah, I was there for one of them. Oh, dear. So, it looks like my strat worked out. Sometimes controllability does work better than anything else. Like, say, well, not Dorman. Dorman actually worked out. But these guys, ooh, that is not looking good. I also have no idea what happened to Mr. Cheese because they are just down near the bottom of the map. Well, that was a lot of fun. I don't know why OBS decided to revert to the default. I'm guessing it's because I decided to move the encoding off of the CPU and move it onto the GPU now that I'm more confident in my NVIDIA card a lot more than I was my AMD Radeon card, which is absolute garbage. And it just decided, you know what? Let's just revert the bitrate back to 2,500 kilobits. Like, garbage. But... Either way, I still had fun. I hope you guys were still able to enjoy it despite that uh, and uh, want to hang around for more. If you do like this, please subscribe. But for now, I would like to thank my channel members. And that does specifically include Hellerman for being a top tier channel member. For the rest of you, I'll catch you all next time. Goodbye.